Welcome back to KT282 Tutorials. Today we are going to begin with production of ultrasonic waves. This is the final part of the final chapter. We are going to learn two ways to produce ultrasonic waves namely magnetostriction oscillator and piezoelectric oscillator. The basic requirement for any oscillator is first something to control the frequency of the ultrasonic waves which is done by using tank circuit second is the amplifier here we will use transistor and the third is feedback let's start with magnetostriction oscillator first we need to understand what is magnetostriction effect here we have a ferromagnetic material now each atom in a ferromagnetic material has its own dipole but initially they are arranged in random order but when an external magnetic field is applied they arrange themselves according to the applied magnetic field as a result as you can see here because of this they need larger length to accommodate themselves and this is known as magnetostriction effect So the definition goes like this the phenomena in which a rod of ferromagnetic material undergoes a small change in length when placed in steady magnetic field parallel to its length so as the magnetic field is applied the molecules arrange themselves as a result the length of the rod increases the mathematical relation is given by this formula this is change in length per unit original length equals k which is a constant b square b is the applied magnetic field so the change in length is the function of the square of the applied magnetic field this is what we are going to use for our production of ultrasonic waves this is the circuit diagram for a magnetostriction oscillator now in many textbooks they don't include this part of the circuit but when i refer to few university recommended textbooks they show this particular part of circuit and so i have included it in the diagram but even if you don't draw this i guess it is okay now this is the tank circuit this is the feedback coil and this is the npn transistor which will be used for amplification of the signal this is a common emitter type of transistor so this you have studied in 12th standard this is the input side and this is the output side now the lc circuit provides us with the alternating current of sinusoidal waveform if you introduce a current or let's say i have attached a charged capacitor in parallel with the inductor then the alternating current is developed in the circuit it works by continuously converting electrical energy into magnetic energy and magnetic energy back to electrical energy so the energy conversion takes place and the alternating current is developed inside this circuit but we are using some of the energy to produce ultrasonic waves so gradually this energy will decrease so in order to maintain the amplitude of the current and in turn maintain the amplitude of the ultrasound which is going to be produced we need to provide some energy this energy is supplied by using feedback and transistor now the feedback is taken with the help of this ferromagnetic rod this is the same rod which we are going to use to produce ultrasonic waves so what happens is as the coil produces magnetic field this field will be along the length of this ferromagnetic rod and that's why 
because of the magnetostriction effect this ferromagnetic rod is going to expand also because of electromagnetic induction some magnetism will be induced in this rod and the induced magnetism causes the current to flow through this coil by means of faraday's law now since because of the alternating current the magnetic field is changing and the change in magnetic field causes the current to flow inside this coil and this current produced inside this coil will be in phase with this current and the current produced in this coil is then supplied to the transistor and this transistor amplifies the current and again feeds it back to the tank circuit and because the current flowing through the feedback coil is in phase with the current flowing through the coil in the lc parallel circuit the two currents will superimpose constructively and it will enhance the signal and it will help in maintaining the amplitude of the current and in turn maintain the amplitude of the ultrasonic waves which we are going to produce okay so now we have a way to maintain the amplitude of the current flowing through this circuit now we are going to use that current to produce ultrasound and the way is you have a ferromagnetic rod due to the alternating current the magnetic field produced by this coil will also be alternating and that's why this rod will have alternate elongation and contraction and this alternate elongation and contraction will push the air around it and the air molecules will also vibrate with that frequency and these vibrations will travel through the air and these vibrations traveling through the air are nothing but ultrasound now the frequency of the current flowing through this tank circuit is given by this formula which is f equals 1 upon 2 pi square root of l c where l is the inductance of coil and c is the capacitance of this capacitor you have learned this in 12th standard this is the resonant frequency the frequency of the rod which is the natural frequency of the rod is given by this formula this is due to the elastic properties of this uh, rod here k is any integer say 1 2 3 100 600 whatever you want this is known as harmonics you have studied this in 12th standard in chapter called stationary waves l is the length of the rod y is the young's modulus and rho is the density of the rod and when this frequency matches with this frequency a resonance occur and the rod vibrates with a greater amplitude now we'll see how piezoelectric oscillator works first you need to understand piezoelectric effect suppose you have crystal with structure like this plus sign indicates positive ions and negative sign indicates a negative ion now as you can see here it is electrically neutral and the center of charge for negative ions coincides with the center of charge of positive ions and hence there is no dipole however if i apply pressure the crystal will get strained and as you can see this side has moved further to the left and the right side has moved further to the right now on the left side there is a dominance of negative charge so 
the center of negative charge shifts slightly to left similarly the center of positive charge shifts slightly to the right and now we have dipole and this can be used to power up electric circuits but we are not interested in powering up electrical circuits we are interested in producing ultrasonic waves so how is this going to help well it is not because what we are going to use is inverse piezoelectric effect so instead of applying pressure and producing potential difference we are going to apply potential difference and cause a strain in the crystal and as we apply alternating voltage across the crystal the crystal will start contracting and elongating this alternate contraction and elongation will be used to produce ultrasound now one of the popular piezoelectric crystal is quartz crystal it has a hexagonal prism structure this long axis is called z axis and this is the top view axis joining these corners is called x axis and the axis going through the midpoint of the sides is the y axis z axis is known as optical axis because of the symmetry and its hexagonal shape the physical properties are repeated after every 120 degree rotations the x axis is called electric axis and along this axis the electric polarization occur so we have to apply potential difference across one of the x axis and this is the circuit diagram for piezoelectric oscillator this is similar to that of uh, magneto restriction oscillator you can see this is the tank circuit this is the feedback and this is the transistor it's same only difference is instead of ferromagnetic rod in between we have this secondary coil so what happens is as the alternating current flows through this circuit by means of mutual induction the current starts flowing through this coil this is similar to what you have studied under the topic of transformers and as the current flows through this circuit and alternating potential gets applied across this piezoelectric crystal and so this crystal starts vibrating and it produces ultrasonic waves and this coil also helps in generating current through this feedback coil by means of mutual inductance again and this feedback as we have seen in the magneto restriction oscillator part will help in maintaining the amplitude of alternating current and same as that of magneto restriction effect the frequency of the tank circuit is given by f equals 1 upon 2 pi square root of l2 c l2 because i have given the notation l2 for the coil in the resonance circuit you can label it l if you want uh, you can label this anything else uh, it doesn't matter and similarly we have the natural frequency of vibration of the crystal given by f equals k upon 2t square root of y by rho this is same as that of magneto restriction oscillator the only difference was here it was l instead of t because there vibrating length in magneto restriction oscillator was the length of the ferromagnetic rod whereas here the thickness of the quartz crystal is vibrating so we have replaced l by t that's all otherwise this formula is the same and again when these two frequencies match we have resonance and the amplitude of vibration will be largest these are some points to compare magneto restriction oscillator and piezoelectric oscillator 
मैग्नोटोस्ट्रिक्शन ऑसिलेटर कैन हैंडल लार्ज पावर वेर एज पीजो इलेक्ट्रिक ऑसिलेटर इज अ लो पावर हैंडलिंग ऑसिलेटर देन मैग्नेटोस्ट्रिक्शन ऑसिलेटर कैन प्रोड्यूस अल्ट्रासोनिक वेव्स ऑफ रिलेटिवली स्मॉलर फ्रिक्वेंसी वेर एज पीजो इलेक्ट्रिक ऑसिलेटर कैन प्रोड्यूस मच हायर फ्रिक्वेंसीज देन मैग्नेटोस्ट्रिक्शन ऑसिलेटर हैज अ शार्प रेजोनेंस कर विच मीन्स द फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ द टैंक सर्किट मस्ट बी ट्यून्ड प्रॉपरली सो दैट इट इज नियरर टू द नैचुरल फ्रिक्वेंसी ऑफ द फेरो मैग्नेटिक रॉड अदरवाइज यू मे नॉट गेट दैट गुड एम्पलीट्यूड बट इट्स नॉट द केस इन पीजो इलेक्ट्रिक ऑसिलेटर इवन इफ यू डिविएट अ लिटिल बिट फ्रॉम द रेजोनेट फ्रिक्वेंसी यू कैन गेट अ बेटर वेव फॉर्म देन मैग्नेटोस्ट्रिक्शन ऑसिलेटर इज लार्जर इन साइज दैन पीजो इलेक्ट्रिक ऑसिलेटर and with this we finish the entire course of applied physics 1 i wish you all the best for the exams